Trump is doing his thing, and the people want to know, especially my friends. <laughs> they want to know. They're saying they're watching the media. The stuff that he's saying is right. just, it's a zoo. Right. And my friends have wanted me to ask you, are you embarrassed for the American people? Because it's just like pandemonium out here when you watch what's going on in the headlines. Well, look, I think it's really early in the process. Mm -hmm. If you look at previous elections. I turn it off. I can't listen to this. This is, this is as low as he's gone. That's an engineer who makes, is that Destin Sandlin, the last one? That's the one with the friend who says Trump is a this and a that? Which one was that? What is he, an, an, an illegal immigrant? And he doesn't like what Trump has to say about illegal immigrants stealing tech jobs, is that it? So he speaks about tampons. He speaks about uh, a false sense of uh, racial profiling. And then he speaks about people stealing jobs from American tech workers. And he is the president of the United States of America. I would say this kind of interview is uh, below the presidency. But then again, we've never had a president that has this been, that has been this low on the totem pole of dignity. Never. It's Im impossible to believe this. I would say that Sean Penn is more of a journalist than, uh, than Barack Obama. You say, well, wait, Obama never said he's a journalist. Well, what is he doing talking to people who make YouTubes? Now, I have a YouTube channel, don't I? People tell me I do. I don't know anything about it. I don't make them. But I have, I think, hundreds and hundreds of YouTubes that people have made from all my many years. And I think now I'm going to create a YouTube channel for myself if there isn't one. Um, look at the numbers here. Combine the three YouTube stars, stars now, stars, attention Spielberg, have more than 12 billion subscribers. The White House has roughly 634,000. I would venture a guess that if I actually invest any time in my YouTube presence, I can greatly exceed that in a very short period of time. But I don't think I need to. I have an audience of millions on the radio show. <clears throat> Why would the president go to YouTubers who are not known for any intelligence, not known for any intellect? What is he doing? He's not running for office. Why do you think he would do this? Why would the president debase himself and the office of the presidency by talking with an unknown YouTuber about the price of tampons, another one about wearing his hat on backwards uh, with an alleged case of racial profiling if we know that this has gotten cops killed already in the country through this hate campaign against police, and then to go to some other guy and talk about Donald Trump being an evil man for wanting to crack down on, on illegal immigration? Why would he do this? Back in a minute. If there was an element named after you, Obamium, <laughs> you've never been asked this, I hope. I have never been asked this. Yes. <laughs> right? So the question a, is, a, this is fantastic. First. So what would you want the physical properties? What would be the elements? Uh, what, 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 what would Obamium be the characteristics? is the element. What, 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 what would be the characteristics of Obamium? That's right. That's right. Now, that's interesting. Well, you know, I, I, I would want it to be uh, stable. Excellent. Uh, I would want it very noble, so maybe yes, noble gas. Yes. Okay. Uh, I would want it uh, to be uh, a catalyst, but uh, one that uh, didn't get too hot or too cold. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and uh, hopefully, it, it, it would be a uh, one that was useful to humanity that we could actually use. So there's Obama on another YouTuber. He didn't know what an element was. He said, what are the elements of the element? Which he caught himself immediately. The earphone went off. Must have given him some headache. And the guy asks him an intelligent question. If an element were named for you and it was called Obamium, or Obamium, Obamer, Bummerin, what would the characteristics of this element, Obamium, be? And Obama actually intelligently says, I'd like it to be stable and a catalyst, which I thought was an intelligent answer, incidentally. But he is actually unstable, and he certainly is a catalyst for division and for revolution. There's no question about that. So he'd be a combination, if you were to find an element named, uh, name an element, Obamium, it would be sort of on the order of magnesium combined with something else. Remember when you are in high school chemistry, when you dropped a little piece of magnesium in water, it sizzled and threw off a white smoke? That would be sort of be a, a Obama combined with some other characteristic, I think. Somebody sent me this, and I don't think it's off color. I've been pondering whether to read it on the air, and I hope that you don't find it offensive at all. I really mean that. 
But I don't find it offensive. I think it's intelligent and it's related to science in a way along the lines of what we just did. And it was this. It says chaos theory. In chaos theory, the butterfly effect is the name given to the sensitive connection between initial conditions in which an insignificant event in one state in nonlinear systems can result in sometimes catastrophic events in the universal state. In other words, although unlikely, it is possible for a butterfly flapping its wings in Texas to cause a typhoon in the Japanese Sea. Case in point, they write, in mid-20th century America, an 18-year-old hippie freshman in a Honolulu college had sex with an older alcoholic Kenyan on a student visa who had a wife and a child back in Africa. And this less than significant event started the collapse and dissolution of the United States of America. That came to me blindly from nowhere, called chaos theory. And it does relate in a way to uh, with the science corner that we're discussing now in the Savage Nation. I think if he goes to a blogger to talk about tampons or alleged police brutality, and then to the characteristics of an, uh, an unknown element called obamium, I think we can also talk about chaos theory as it relates to this man who has caused exactly that around the world. But why would he go on to these YouTube channels? He's not running for office. What's he doing? Justin, KSFO, what's he doing? Why is he doing it? Mike, you know, I think, you know, anyone with half a brain would realize that this man is the most narcissistic figurehead that ever lived. And I think he, wrote, he needs constant validation to feed his narcissism. So I think, uh, you know, he's appealing to these low-life YouTubers to kind of feed this high that he constantly needs. Interesting, the high. You know, where did we talk about that the other day? It's the same with Sean Penn. He needs this constant reassurance that he's a great man, a great actor, and he he won the Academy Award a number of years ago, but where has he been since then? Nowhere. Hasn't been seen or heard from, so now he suddenly needs to be, what, rewarded as a journalist? It's the same kind of thing, this constant need for ego feed, right? Correct, absolutely. But we get it every day on the radio. <laughs> we narcissists and talk radio get this on a daily basis from our talk shows. <laughs> I got you know this funny thing. We're using the word narcissism on a regular basis now about Obama, but it's not unique to him. Anybody in the media is fundamentally mildly narcissistic, and if they're really good at it, they're probably a major league narcissist. That's the truth. So I I think that narcissism per se is not a bad thing. I think it's how you use your narcissism. You know, think about what I'm saying. No one's ever dared take this on, but let's go with it. You mind if I f go with this for a minute? Let's look at a great surgeon. Wouldn't you say that a man or a woman who wants to be a great surgeon has a degree of pride and a desire to be admired? Would you call that narcissism? How would you, how would you differentiate a fine surgeon who wants to be recognized as a fine surgeon from a narcissist? And is there narcissism not, is narcissism not required? in all attributes of life that are, that are out of the ordinary. Wouldn't you say that, Justin? I would say so, Mike. You know, I think it's, you know, important to feel confident. Um, you see, I, I, we've never discussed this, but, you know, my show, it, it says it's a show for the thinking person, right? Talk radio for the thinking person. I added that this year for a reason. This is the kind of question I love more than any. We call Obama a narcissist. And then I say to you that I and talk radio am a narcissist, as is anyone else who succeeded in this business. And that's true for any sports figure. It's true for any doctor who's exceptional. It's true for anyone in any walk of life who does things and is recognized for it. So where is the differential here between narcissism and uh, a desire to be admired? And moreover, is narcissism necessarily a bad thing? And that's why when we say narcissism about Obama, I think we need to qualify it and not simply say narcissist. I would say he's a, an unhealthy narcissist. An unhealthy narcissist seeks attention for uh, actions that may not be productive for the individual's family or society as a whole around them. And that's what we mean when we say Obama's a narcissist. It's not that he's just a narcissist. He's an unhealthy narcissist. And I, I would say that you could apply that to most people in Hollywood. So what would healthy narcissism be? Uh, what would healthy narcissism be? Wouldn't it be a preacher, for example, in a church who gets up there and has such charisma that he can move an audience? Wouldn't you say he's driven somewhat by, uh, what do you say, pride, self-love, self, self -love, 
a desire to be admired? Is that not narcissism? Where does self, where does that end and narcissism begin? I don't know. Is there a psychiatrist in the audience? So I think that we redefine the term. We won't just say, say that Obama's a narcissist anymore. But why is he reaching out on YouTube is the question. I don't know that this has to do with, 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 uh, with narcissism. He's a community organizer. He's organizing a community. To him, the YouTubers are a community of voters, future and present voters. So he's just trying to drum up business for the failing Democrat brand, the brand he has single-handedly destroyed. He has single-handedly destroyed the Democrat Party. My feeling is that Trump is going to win by the biggest landslide in modern history, and then it's going to be a catastrophic, catastrophic, catastrophic for the Democrat Party right down to the local election level. Socialism is dead. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. at my palm and she made a magic sign she said what you need is love potion number nine, love potion number nine is something this country can use welcome back to the savage nation so the president of the united states of america ignores the stock market crash ignores the humiliation of the u.s navy and goes on a youtube channel today with three unknown youtubers talks about uh, the uh, taxation on tampons uh, alleged p police brutality and something else. So it leads you to ask, what's he doing? Why is he doing this? What is he doing? Why is he going YouTube? And I ask myself, okay, so I just looked up my name on YouTube. I had to do that because I never do. And I'm running about uh, 20000 a day. Someone's illegally posting all of my shows. They probably mean well by it, but truthfully, it's copyrighted content. It's owned by Cumulus Broadcasting. Uh, the thing is, is they're taking every one of my shows and putting them up on, on YouTube. And 10,000 people view it one day, 20,000 another, 22,000 another, 27,000 another. So if you were to average it out, what, at 20,000 a day times five days a week, 100,000 views a week, 400,000 views a month, that's five million people a year are looking at my YouTubes. And yet the president doesn't go on any talk radio show that has any criticism of his crazy administration doesn't want to debate any issue whatsoever with anyone who opposes him. Instead, he goes on to a YouTube channel. I would welcome the president on the show. Of course, he'd never come on the show. Under any circumstance, would he? I think he would do very well, by the way. He's an extremely skilled rhetorician. He's not an easy man to debate, by the way. Don't, don't assume he's easy. He wouldn't be president if he was easy. None of them are. But the thing is, is I'd like to be able to talk about why is he letting the borders melt down? Why doesn't he crack down on the fact that so many ballots are in so many languages when they should be only in English? And why, you'll get the picture. I don't have to read the whole uh, litany to you of what I would say if the president were to grant me an interview, but it's never going to happen. Let's go to Jeremy on KLIF Radio in Dallas, my new affiliate. Jeremy, tell us what a narcissist is as opposed to a person who has great pride in what they do absolutely i'll put it to you this way there's this thing called uh that, that most personnel or all personality disorders suffer from one thing the inability to have insight in other words they can't see how their anything that they do influences a single outcome especially their own that's part of it just for person wait, wait let me show you mean they don't know that they influence at all they have no idea yeah no it, it's 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 100 percent lost on them they almost they feel like the world's like a clock and that humankind was set in motion like a clock, and they're just doing their part by being the greatest at everything, for the most part. Wait, but let me but wait, I'm not following. So in other words, when Obama signs an executive order, he's not being a narcissist? Well, it just depends on how you look at it. He's, you know, him signing an executive order is simply a formality, because his idea for whatever the executive order is was something that should have happened a long time ago, and finally he's here to do it. So it's, 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 it's a strange... It's a strange thing where it's not outcome-based, which makes it almost insidious and very difficult to treat. Oh, so let's take the president that. Let's take the president out of the discussion. We all know people in our lives who we consider to be overly uh, uh, narcissistic, in love with themselves. In other words, right? Isn't that a common way of putting what narcissism is? Oh, she's in love with herself, right? It's, 
Yeah, it actually, they suffer from what's called uh, the personal fable. And what that means is, you know, they are as, they are as preoccupied with them.